talk. I kill niggas. I say niggas that don't love it. Nigga, you wanna be- Who ain't fucking? I know you ain't saying me. I know you ain't saying I ain't fucking. I'm fuck- Help me. Help me. Nigga. Blood, let me holler at you real quick. Hey, young blood. Stay it. Young blood, let me holler at you real quick. Hey. Look at me. What? A no. Come here. Look at me. In this clip, Kevin is telling us why he cannot be a thug or a rapper. No, who to fight, who not to fight, man. I would love to be a thug. I swear I wish I could be a thug. I don't have it in me. Like, I don't have those thug qualities in me. I was actually talking to this thug dude. I was in D.C. not too long ago, right? And I talked to this guy. We might have talked for about 15 minutes. I swear to you, I don't know what we were talking about. But... <laughs> He was so passionate about the stuff that he was saying. That's the only reason why I stayed there to listen. It's exactly what he said. It's not even a joke. This is exactly how he was talking to me. He's like, you know what I mean? I'm talking to the dude, right, man? And we talking. He's talking about whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> right? Right? So I'm like, ah, right? You know what I mean? They come to me, I'm like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They get that, you know what I'm saying? Flip that, press that, ah, 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 ah. Everybody get money. Ah, ah. Burger. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm talking shit. You know what I mean? Talking dip law. I dip niggas You know what I mean? Talking to me. Right? Right? You know what I'm saying? He came back. I'm like, I looked up. He was dead. I said, whoa, what? Wait, wait a second. Back up. Back home. Well, who killed him? Whoop, whoop. Wait I was so confused, I thought I was a witness. I said, did I see this? Was I the air? I, I don't want to be a part of it, is what I'm saying. I must have been so afraid in my life, man. I just don't do good with thug stuff, thug activity. I had one thug dude tell me he was going to pop the trunk on me one time. He said, like, say something else, I'm going to pop the trunk on your bitch ass. Everybody ran. I was like, well, where'd you park? <laughs> and looked at me like I was crazy. Man, get out of there. I just want to know how far it was. I, could, I might not have to run. We could catch the train and still get home. I wish I could be a rapper or some shit. I really do. You know why I can't be a rapper, though, man? Because my voice ain't deep enough. To be a rapper, you need a deep voice. That's the only way people going to want to listen to you on a regular basis. I don't think nobody would buy my album because my voice is too small. Yeah, bitch, I'm a killer. I shoot you in your face. Pshirm, pshirm, everybody gonna die. Pshirm, pshirm, everybody gonna die tonight. <laughs> Did he just say pshirm, pshirm? I think he... I'm not buying that shit if he said pshirm, pshirm. Ain't no way I'm in. Certain shit just keeps you from being tough. You wanna know what's really keeping me from being tough? Look at this. This is really holding me back. Look at this shit here. Look at this. Look at this shit. Look at this shit here. This is really fucking me up, man. Cause ain't nothing tough about this. It don't matter what you say. Ain't nobody gonna take you serious if you swing your feet. It don't matter. I will kill everybody in this bitch tonight. Nobody fucking playing with y'all. Y'all think it's a game? No, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the way people treat me around here. Would you talk to a guy who swung his feet? If you at a club and I try to talk to you, come in, baby, let me holler at you for a second. You, girl, you know damn well who I'm talking to. Wait a second. Let me climb down and get my feet together. Wait a minute now. Rappers make me laugh, though. I swear rappers are funny, man. You ever see rappers freestyle? Like when they be battling each other? You ever notice the more angry a rapper get, the higher his hands get? You ever notice that? <laughs> <laughs> they start off so calm. Like, I'm, <laughs> this is rappers when they freestyle. You like the dude, this the dude when he be listening to the other guy. <laughs> you ready? No, I got him. I got him, B. <laughs> Wait, this is really how they be. Look. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> hey, look, <though. laughs> hey. <laughs> it's not a, a rapper. I'm really trying to be a rapper right now. Like this, this, <laughs> this is the real angry rapper. Real talk. I kill niggas. 
I slay niggas that don't love it. Nigga, you wanna beat me to get it? I get it back. I'm like, oh shit. I was a dude be so confused. Oh shit, this nigga's crazy. He's about to. <laughs> he be trying to follow his hands. This nigga's crazy. He's about to kill me. He's gonna cut me or something. In this clip, check Kevin's reaction when his nephew told him a nasty secret. You know, honestly, what makes me laugh? Hearing other people talk about sex. That's enough for me. Hearing other people talk about sex is the funniest shit in the world. Funniest people to listen to talk about sex are my nephews. My nephews are 21, 22 years old. It's the funniest shit that you will ever hear, man. It's the funniest shit you'll ever hear, but they don't, they don't offer the information. You got to bait it out of them. You got to set a trap, see if they fall for it. I set the trap, they fall in it every time. I just come in the room hot. Y'all ain't fucking yet. They take the bait every time. Who ain't fucking? Every time, who ain't fucking? I know you ain't saying me. I know you ain't saying I ain't fucking. I'm fucking. I know you ain't saying me. Go ahead, huh? You ain't fucking, bitch. I know your young ass ain't fucking. I'm fucking, huh? What you doing? Tell me what you doing there. No, I ain't telling you. Because if I tell you, you're going to try to put it in one of your little comedy shows. I ain't fucking talking about you. Shut up. The hell, I'm going to put you in my comedy show for I got jokes. I don't need you. What you doing? Give me the nastiest thing that you've done. No judging? No judging. What I'm going to judge you for? All right. Nastiest thing I've done? I went to the movies with this girl. We go to the movies. She tell me, get a large bucket of popcorn. I get the bucket of popcorn. I sit down. She cut a hole in the bottom. Told me, put my dick through the hole. She gave me a butter beat off. I said, what the fuck? I caught myself. I had to act like I knew what it was. <laughs> ah, a butter beat off. I know that's right. A butter beat off. You know you're older because you asked the wrong questions. Fuck y'all get a large for it. Why you waste all that popcorn? You just got the small. Twelve, fourteen dollar difference, ain't it? Why you get that? That butter don't get in your hole? That sounds like an infection waiting to happen. That's how you catch the vid. You gonna get the vid. Get the vid 19 doing that shit, putting the butter in your hole. You don't want the butter in your hole. I ran home, told my wife. You ain't gonna believe this shit. I was talking to Terrence. Terrence told me these kids out here are giving each other butter beat offs. She said, they still doing that? I said, what the fuck is happening here? Who are you? I don't even want to know no more. You just stop right there. My kids better not be doing it. I know that much. If I find out my kids do not have a goddamn fit. You can't just come out and ask your kids though. You gotta, once again, to set the trap, see if they step in it. We had dinner, eating a good dinner at the house. Nice dinner. I throw the question out to my wife. Babe, we should go to the movies. Maybe you can give me a butter beat off. I look right at my fucking daughter, right at my daughter. Staring at her ass. She didn't budge. She was cool as a fan, eating the food and shit. I've never been more proud as a father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. She don't even know what the fuck it is. Thank you, God turn this way, my son was like, oh yeah. He said, yeah. <laughs> you better get the large, dad. You know what that thought In this clip, Kevin is talking about women. And before we go, please guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It will cost you nothing. It will help me a lot. <laughs> I was honest. That's what it's about. I think that's probably why women don't respect me because I'm so honest. I'm serious, my wife don't respect me. I know she don't. You feel like your lady respects you, man? You have a fight? No? Never felt, felt like this fight, like a good one. Never? <laughs> You've never tried to hit him, ever? No? <laughs> you tried to hit him? I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm being honest with you. I promote domestic violence. I think, I think if you're in a... No, I know it sounds crazy. I'm telling y'all some real stuff. I think if you're in a relationship and your woman has never tried to hit you, she don't love you. Any woman that love you 
is gonna try to hurt you at some point in time when you make her mad. That's how you know when you got a good woman. I don't mind that. I don't like hypocrites. I don't like women that are hypocrites. Like any female that like dare a man to hit her for three hours and didn't act surprised when he do it. I don't, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. You ever see that? You ever see a woman talk all that shit and then act like she don't know where the consequences came from? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you something. I wish you would put your hands on me. No, 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 no. I wish you would. No, no, see, let me tell you something. See, you think I'm one of these regular bitches that won't fight you back. That's the thing. But let me tell you something. I promise you, boo-boo. <laughs> you ever, <laughs> hey, you ever have a girl slow down on you like that? But let me tell you something. I promise you, boo-boo, it's not gonna go down the way you think it. No, don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch and walk away. Come back. Put your hands on me. Watch what I do. Take <laughs> You're not crazy, you just tired of you talking shit for three hours, that's all that is. <laughs> Women, y'all know how to push them buttons, man. Y'all talented. Women, y'all got a different level. Like, y'all push, push men to a different level of anger. Like, you ever get so mad when you argue with a girl that you can't find the words, so you gotta make a noise? <laughs> you, you, the word is right there, but you can't get it out. You, bitch, first of all, I'm trying to do, I got all the uh, stuff in it. Whoa! Shit! <laughs> Girl! You don't know where that noise came from. You never made that noise ever in life. They make you get to those points. You ever outline a girl? You know what that is? So you put your hands around your lady's face. You don't want to hit her. You just want to show her what you could do. It's a scare tactic. It's real fast. It's, bitch, say something else. I swear to God, I'm, that's all it is. <laughs> It's real quick, say another, swear to God, I'm... <laughs> your threats don't even make sense. I'll put your stomach in your face and make you eat yourself. What? What'd you say? Stomach in your face, make you eat yourself. Every woman knows how to push a man's buttons. That's what y'all good at. You know how to make your man mad. You know how to piss him off. You know what to say to make him mad. He can argue with any other woman in here. He not gonna care what they got to say. He can go, ah, shut up, beat it, get out my face. You know how to get a reaction. Fuck you, Terrence. Fuck you and your third ball. What? <laughs> <laughs> my third, don't talk about my third ball. The doctor said it's a possible medical condition. It could be cancer. <laughs> he don't like that. <laughs> you know how to get those reactions out of him. Like, you know what my wife do to make me mad? I don't like it when she sing when she get mad. I can't stand that. I can't stand that. When women get so emotional, they start singing when they get mad. You ain't going to shit, nigga. You ain't going to do shit. You ain't going to shit. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to shit. You just got to... You just gotta sit there with the you ain't gonna do shit face. That's the, that's the face to say you ain't got nothing left. That's what women do. Women, you play mind games. Stop forgiving men for stuff, and after you forgive them, then forgetting that you forgave them, and talk about the shit that you already forgave them for, and getting mad about it. Stop doing that. You forgave them, forgive them. It's not the worst of being a man that messed up in the past and you trying to correct yourself, but your woman keep bringing the past up. So now every time you tell the truth, it sounds like you're lying, and when you're lying, it sounds like you're telling the truth. I'm saying, is that the point in my relationship where I'm afraid for my wife to hear me have fun? I be trying to shut fun down. Like, when she's not around and she call me, I get mad at my friend. Shut the fuck up. Everybody, shut up. Look, put your seatbelts on. Buckle up. Every Put your seatbelt on. I don't know where she is. Look safe. <laughs> We're straight ahead until we figure this out. She's crazy. That's what women do. I'm gonna tell you how you can tell a battered man. You know how you can tell a man that's been through so much emotionally? When you speak to him. Whenever you speak to a man and he starts talking about his relationship without you asking anything about it, that's a battered man. <laughs> As soon as you meet him, hey, how you doing? My wife and I go camping every week. What? 
<laughs> she likes Cheerios too. What are you? <laughs> He's battered. He thinks that you're one of her friends and she sent you to come talk to him. He thinks it's a setup. <laughs> He's so crazy, you think you're five steps ahead of you because he don't know what's what. Now Kevin is talking about lying and man's code. Understand something, people. Lying will ruin your life. Lying will ruin your goddamn life. Lying ruined my marriage. True shit, sweetie. Lying ruined my goddamn marriage. That's a lie. I cheated. Let's talk about it, though. Let's figure it out. Don't judge me. Let me explain. Um, yes. Yes, people. I cheated. Am I ashamed of it? No. No, I'm not. Do I wish that I could take it back? No. No, I don't. Let me tell you why. You can't evolve as a man if you never make a mistake. The only way that you can be perfect is to fuck up. I get it. I fucked up. Don't cheat. Nah. Whatever. Now, do I... Do I think cheating was the problem? No, I don't. Cheating was not the problem. Lying about cheating was a problem. If I had been honest about it, I might have worked it out. But I wasn't. I lied. And I didn't just lie on myself. I put my best friend in my lie. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing to do. Let me explain why. Harry ignored all sides, okay? Let me tell you how shit hit the fan. Let me tell you how shit hit the fan. I come in the house, right? I come in the house, it's like 4 in the morning. I'm drunk, people. Drunk as shit. I have no balance. I'm all over the place. I'm rocking back and forth. As soon as I walk in the house, she wakes up. She goes off. You know what? I'm sick of this. I know you was probably out with some bitch. You was probably messing with some bitch. Now I'm drunk. I don't want to respond because I don't have any balance. I'm rocking back and forth. You don't look believable when you're rocking back and forth. So I had to choose a stance in which I look believable. So I chose this. I said, let me tell you something. Listen to me. <laughs> want nobody with no bitch, okay? You're wrong. Matter of fact, to prove you wrong, I'm going to call Harry. Harry not expecting me to call right now, so Harry don't have no reason to lie. And I'm going to put it on speakerphone. About to make you feel stupid. Watch this. Watch how fucking stupid you feel. Watch. Watch this. Harry. Harry. Real quick. Don't lie. Let's stop right there. Let, let's just stop right there for a second. What, what does that mean? What does that mean, people? Lie. It means lie right now. I mean, the bitch got to drop on us. My back is against the wall. This is not a test. It's the real deal. Help me. Help me. Nigga. Help me. Harry ignored all sides. I'm telling you exactly what Harry said. I said, Harry, Harry, real quick, don't lie. Where are we coming from right now? He said, man, you was with that bitch with the fat ass. <laughs> what? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Yo. <laughs> Understand something. I'm not, I'm not mad at Harry. The reason I'm not mad at Harry is because Harry has done some dumb shit, but I understand who he is. See, Harry might be the smartest, dumbest friend I've ever had in my life, okay? Let me tell you the dumbest thing that Harry's ever done. Harry invented the code for us to use to let each other know when we were around our women. Basically, if somebody uses the code, it means don't say anything stupid. You might be on speakerphone. Don't say nothing dumb. The phone might be loud enough so my girl can hear whatever it is you're saying. It means don't say anything that could jeopardize our relationship. The code was, man, I'm hungry as shit. That's cold, people. Man, I'm hungry as shit. Here's what pissed me off about the code. Harry invented the fucking code. So there's no reason why Harry should have messed with the code. Here's how Harry messes it up. I'm in the car with my lady. I'm driving, she in the passenger seat. Harry called me I'm in the car. I got the Bluetooth shit in the car, so my phone rings, the whole car rings. Harry's name pops up on the dashboard. I answer, what up, boy? Kev, what's going on? Ain't shit. This I knew the conversation was about to take turn for the worse. This I knew was about to get filthy. He said, nigga. Harry. Hey, hey. Man, I'm hungry as shit. He said, I'm not, I just say, what? What? Harry! Woo -woo. Harry! Woo -woo. Harry! I said, man, I'm hungry as shit. He said, yo, you should go to Subway, get the foot long fight out. What the fuck? Harry! Harry! I said, man, I'm hungry as shit. He said, oh, that must mean you ready to eat these white bitches. What? 
no, 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 no. I ain't eat no white bitch. I ain't eat no white bitches. I never did. Oh my God, no. Oh no. Yo, have you ever been in trouble with your girl to the point where you're afraid to look at her, but you can feel her staring at the side of your goddamn face? I was so scared, I never looked at her. I just looked straight and started making dumbass noises. I started, I started pointing out shit. Ooh, look, a deer bruh. You see it? I just saw a deer bruh. I fucking kill y'all, man. Get fired on these bitches again. No. Come In here. this look clip, Kevin is hey. talking about hey. dealing with babies. What, look at me. What is that? It's important to understand as you go through levels in life. There's tons of levels, man. As you go through these levels, fucking just understand what they were and become better. I'm going to give you guys one gem. If you don't take anything from this show tonight, take this one piece of information with you. So many people are on this journey to live a perfect life. I personally think it's stupid. The reason why I say it's stupid is because you have no idea what perfection is unless you've experienced imperfection. The point that I'm making is that you should embrace your flaws and fuck-ups because they help make you who you're supposed to be. Don't run away from your bullshit. Embrace it and become better. That's my message. Now, right now, right now we're actually in a new stage. Uh, we just had a baby nine months ago. Kenzo Cash Hart, man. Thank you. Father of three. Father of three now. Now... Here's the thing. People thought that I was playing around when I first talked about it, but I wasn't. I didn't know if I really wanted to have another baby. The reason why is because I felt like I did it. I got the best of both worlds. I got a boy. I got a girl. We're married. My kids are your kids. You got kids. Those are your kids. She was like, I know, but they old. I want new ones. First of all, listen to me. Don't, don't talk about my fucking kids like they use cars. Ain't nothing wrong with these goddamn kids. She was like, I know. I just want new ones. The thing is, I didn't know if I had the patience to deal with kids. That two-year-old age, you need patience to deal with that two-year-old baby. All you do is repeat yourself all goddamn day to a two-year-old child. You say the same shit over and over again. Hey, hey, come here, look at me. Hey, look at me, what did I say? No, come here, look at me. Hey, look at me, what did I No, come here, look at me. Hey, hey, what I look at me, what did I say? What? No, come here. Look at hey, hey. Look at you want to get you want to get ah you want to no. Come here. Look, don't nobody got time to do that shit all day. Ladies, stop assuming that every man has that patience because we don't. We don't have the patience. Another thing, ladies, stop making these old ass men have these fucking babies. I was at a park. I saw a 63 year old man with a two year old baby. It was sad. He was treating the baby like a loose basketball at the playground. He hey hey grab that baby hey goddamn. Ah, fucking back, god damn. Somebody grab that baby, throw that baby back. But he was a cool old head. You know those old heads that are stuck like in that era, in this era right here? He was cool as shit. He didn't know how to work none of the baby shit. So he was trying to get my attention. He was like, hey, hey, young blood. Hey, young blood, let me holler at you real quick. Hey, young blood. Steve. Young blood, let me have it you real quick. Hey. Let me have it you, young blood. I got the stroller up, but I can't get it down. It's like a hard dick on a good night. Hello, give me some. Come on now, young blood. Give me some. You know what I'm talking about. I said, look, it's a tap and release. All you gotta do is tap the middle section, the stroller gonna collapse. He said, show me how to do it, young blood. I tapped the stroller, the stroller collapsed. He lost it. He said, God, shit. Yeah! Yeah! Young blood, anyway, I get you falling into my car, help me properly strap my baby in a car seat. I don't think I did it right on the way over here. Let's just say I made a left and my baby slid from the right and smacked her head on the glass on the left hand side. She's bleeding and everything. I'm gonna tell her mother it happened at the playground, but between us, it did not. Give me some. Come on now. Hello. You know what I'm talking about. Ladies, I will say this though. When it comes to having patience, you got it. I take my hat off to you. You actually deserve all the accolades that come your way when it comes to dealing with a child, ladies. Feeding a kid, bathing a kid, clothing a kid, to school, from school, potty training. Some of you do it while you work. It's unfucking believable Unbelievable. But, but, 
The one thing that you are not, ladies, is fun. You're not fun. Now, I know some women instantly got an attitude. What bullshit? I'm fucking fun. You don't even know. I'm so much fun. No, you're not. You're not. In this clip, Kevin is telling us stories about his spoiled kid. My wife said what she normally says. Kevin, you need to calm down. You need to get yourself together, Kevin. You're getting older, you're getting more irritable, and you don't want that energy to rub off on your kids. It's not going to rub off on my goddamn kids. I know it's not going to rub off on my kids. You know, this pandemic actually gave me a chance to spend a lot of time with my kids. A lot of fucking time with my kids. For the first time, I realized my kids are a little spoiled. They're a little spoiled. But it's not by choice. It's by circumstances. I have good kids. My kids are great fucking kids. I got to be honest, man. I got very lucky. I got great kids. But because of their circumstances, they're a little spoiled. For example, my kids have been flying private since they've been born. They didn't ask for that. They were born into that. They only travel with me. The first time they traveled outside of me was during this pandemic. With my ex-wife. Went back to Philadelphia with their mom to go see their grandma. My kids called me from the airport. You would have thought, you would have thought my kids were in Baghdad. I've never seen a higher level of panic in my fucking life. Called me from the airport. Dad! What's happening? <laughs> My daughter was like, they're taking my lotions and my toothpaste. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> they're making me walk through metal. My son snatched the phone. What the fuck is going on, dad? <laughs> they won't let me take my bags on the plane. They said I can't take my backpacks and my pulleys and my duffies. Saying I gotta put my games underneath. Well, how am I gonna play them, dad? <laughs> I told them both, relax, stop it, stop. Both of you, it's called security. It's called TSA, okay? This is called life with your mother, all right? There's a difference. There's a drop off, it's all right. Things change, it's okay. You'll both be fine. I overlook some of the things that I do because I never thought twice about them. Me and my kids go to the amusement park. We do the whole park. The whole fucking park, man. 30, 40 minutes. How? Well, I call ahead. There's a concierge they assigned to me. I get to the park. The concierge walks me and my family up to the front of every single ride. Done it for years. Keep in mind, I explain to my kids, listen, this is earned. It's not given. This doesn't just happen. Your father worked hard to be able to walk to the front of these fucking lines. There's rules that go with this. You don't just walk to the front of the line. Rule number one, as we are walking to the front of the line, you do not make eye contact with none of these fucking people in this line. You hear me? You keep your eyes straight ahead and you don't fucking look left or right until we get to the front of the line. These people are going to say things. They're going to say a lot of mean things about me, you. You just ignore them. Fucking ignore them because guess what? When we're in our car, we're headed home. We're never gonna see these people again. You know what these people are gonna be? They're still gonna be in that fucking line. To be honest with you, they're still gonna be in the fucking line. Kick you in the back. Swear to God, now Chuck downstairs. Kevin's reaction when his son told him "fuck, fuck you." <laughs> my biggest fear was I didn't want my kids to try to talk to me about what they saw. Please, God, don't let my kids talk to me about the shit that they saw. I'm a firm believer in letting information float in the air and disappear. I don't like to talk about it. Let it float in the air and disappear. I go downstairs in the kitchen. I see my son in the kitchen. My son gave me a look that said that he wanted to ask me about what he just saw. I gave him a look back that said, don't you fucking ask me about nothing that you just saw. And I knew, I knew he wasn't really going to try to ask me because he got in trouble in school earlier that week. I had to take my son's phone from him, which is the worst thing you can do to a child. Taking a kid's phone is detrimental to a child's lifestyle. As soon as I took his phone, he immediately turned into a crackhead. Instantly. <laughs> Instantly. I said, give me the phone. Give me the phone. You're not getting the phone back till you get your shit together. I snatched the phone. He broke down. He said, come on, daddy. Don't do me like that. <laughs> he started moving them. Don't do me like that, daddy. He said, take my leg instead. Take my leg. What? Well, give me the goddamn phone. You're not getting the phone back till you get your shit together. 
When I take the phone, I say to myself, you know what? I need to go through my son's phone. I need to see what my son has been talking about on his goddamn phone. It's irresponsible on my part as a parent to not know what's on my son's phone. I go to go through the phone, people, I realize I don't have the code. I don't got the thumbprint, the face ID, nothing. So I got to go back to this little nigga and ask him to put the goddamn code in the phone. Put the code in the phone so I can see what you've been talking about. Straight face, my son said, nah, man, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> what? Boy, put the code in the phone before I punch you in the fucking throat. That's what I said. I said that. He took off running. Like he don't live in this house. Like I'm not going to see him at the dinner table in 10 minutes. I said, ain't nobody chasing you. Give me the code to the phone before I kick you in the back. Swear to God from downstairs, all I heard was, fuck you. <laughs> oh! I'm going to kill him. I'm about to kill him. I run downstairs, grab my son by the neck. I start choking the shit out of my son. What the fuck you say to me? He couldn't breathe. He, ah, ah. he said, that's the code. The code is fuck you. <laughs> oh. That's a good code, son. That's a good code, is it? Is it Y-O-U or the letter U? How you spell it? I scratched your neck up real good. I apologize. I'm, I'm going to get you a turtleneck so you don't have to go to school looking like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> my kids are getting older. Daughter's 13. My son is 10 now. The older they get, the more the arguments escalate. I caught my kids cursing at each other the other day. This shit made me laugh. If you're a parent, you're here tonight, you don't think your kids curse, you're a stupid parent. You're stupid. As soon as you walk out the house, your kids let it fly. Fuck, mother bitch, shit, dick, pussy ass, whole bitch. It don't even go together. They say it at the same time. I heard my daughter going off on my son, giving him the business. I'm asleep. I'm laying on the couch. She's snapping. I'm sick of your shit, Hendrix. You keep fucking with me, I'm gonna bust your ass. I said, God damn, wait a minute. What the hell is going on in there? And I don't want to blow my cover because I want to hear what my son says back. I want to hear my son's rebuttal. My son is exactly like me when I was a child. We're identical, we're exactly the same. My son is such a bitch. He's such a bitch. This is what my son said. My son goes, Honestly, really, then what? Nothing, so why are we talking about it? Okay. <laughs> what? He, st <laughs> he stormed off like he won. Okay. <laughs> In my son's defense, though, man, he's got it bad. I don't know what it is about older sisters and their younger brothers. Older sisters love to whoop up on their younger brothers. I don't know why. It's a real thing. She dragged him down the steps the other day. I didn't see it. I heard it. I just heard my son. He was like, oh, God, not again. He just heard the fucking steps. But she's a tough girl. My daughter's not a little girly girl. She's a little tomboy, man. She's a tough fucking girl. She just got a period not too long ago. Took it like a champ. Shoulders shrugged it like it was nothing. I was nervous. I was nervous because I knew it was coming. I saw the signs. Emotions, feelings all over the goddamn place. I tried to prepare for this period as if it was an earthquake. I went out, I bought a bunch of emergency period kits, put them in a jacket pocket, her book bags. My fear was I didn't want my baby to get the blood butt at school. That was my fear. If your baby get the blood butt, you gotta relocate. You can't send that child back to that school. You gotta fucking get a new school, you gotta move. It's a bunch of expenses that go into that problem. She came downstairs, she caught me off guard. She was like, Dad, I take my period on. I panicked. Fuck! Right now? Is it happening right now? She said, mm, something coming down my leg. Oh! All my training went out the window. I, I said, go in the kitchen, get a gallon of milk, drink it, hurry up. It'll freeze the blood up. I don't know where I got that from. I pulled that out my ass. I opened up a maxi pad like it was a grenade. I said, ah! <laughs> I fucking missed. Shit stuck to her face. It was bad. That was a 
Bad situation. 